Ever wonder why rabbits and their feet are associated with luck? Or why, even though fear of spiders is especially popular, many associate them with luck and prosperity? Or why cats, and especially black cats, carry so many superstitions? For the month of March, I'll be looking at stories behind common superstitions and symbols of luck. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind lucky animals. But first, a quick message. If you're listening to this, you know how awesome you are for listening to podcasts, right? You get to be that friend who starts sentences with, hey, I heard on a podcast. One out of five people listen to podcasts every month. That means while you're the cool one, four of your friends, well, aren't as cool as you. But you have the power to help them. Be a good friend and suggest a podcast. For the month of March, hundreds of podcasts from NPR, StuffYouShouldKnow.com, and indie podcasts alike are putting out a challenge to listeners to introduce their friends to podcasts. And as much as I'd love it if you recommended the story behind, it might not be up everyone's alley. But there are plenty of shows to choose from. Whatever you decide to suggest to your friends, tweet about it using the hashtag tripod. That's T-R-Y-P-O-D, as in try a podcast. I'll be using the hashtag all month to talk about some of my favorites as well. Rabbits might be one of the animals most associated with luck, or at least their feet. But rabbits have been heralded as lucky as far back as 600 B.C., when the Celts would see them burrowing underground and thought that meant that they were communicating with the underworld. That belief may not have continued for long, but the association with rabbits and luck did. They became a symbol for fertility because of their quick breeding habits. And because of that, this might also be the basis for why rabbits and hares are associated with the spring, and even Easter since spring is associated with rebirth. By the way, when German settlers came to America in the 17th century, they brought with them the tradition of making nests for an egg-laying hare associated with Easter to lay her eggs. And this was part of what led to the tradition of Easter baskets and Easter eggs. It's considered good luck to see a rabbit running through the fields or through your yard, and it can be a sign to have children or that your crops will be plentiful that year. But what makes their feet in particular so lucky? Well, have you ever seen a rabbit run in slow motion? The back legs touch the ground in front of the front legs, which somehow translated to those legs being the luckiest. In his 16th century book, The Discovery of Witchcraft, author Reginald Scott suggested carrying a rabbit's foot as a method for dealing with the pain of arthritis. This was followed by a paragraph describing just how lucky a unicorn's horn is, so you might want to stick with regular arthritis cream instead of hunting for a rabbit. But then again, you wouldn't benefit from finding your own rabbit anyway, since the legend says, if you obtain a rabbit's foot for yourself, it will bring bad luck, and only a rabbit's foot gifted to you is considered good luck. When you think about lucky animals, spiders might not necessarily be the first one to pop into your mind. I mean, who sees an insect with creepy crawly legs and decides it's a good thing? But in ancient China and Rome, spiders were associated with money, and a particular type of spiders were known as sheet weavers or money spiders. If this type was seen moving around on you, the Chinese said it was weaving you new garments to prepare you for riches. I don't know about you, but I'll happily wait for the riches and go shopping without the spiders, thank you. In West Africa, stories of a spider god called Anansi were passed on orally from generation to generation. This god became associated with storytelling for this reason. During the slave trade, Anansi stories were brought to the Caribbean, and by the time the stories reached southern U.S. areas, Anansi was changed to Aunt Nancy, and the stories told of a wise spider who would best larger creatures by using his wisdom. And for you comic book guys screaming at your dashboards right now, yes, I know, Anansi was also part of the Spider-Man universe. And while the look of spiders might just be superstition, a particular group of spiders provided the inspiration for E.B. White to write Charlotte's Web. When he noticed one preparing a sack of eggs one day, and he decided to cut it down and take it in a box with holes punched in it to New York City. When they hatched, he watched as they wove webs between his comb and brush, and he became entranced by them. They were very busy and almost invisible. They were so small. 
We all lived together happily for a couple of weeks. And then somebody whose duty it was to dust my dresser balked. And I broke up the show. At the present time, three of Charlotte's granddaughters are trapping at the foot of the stairs in my barn cellar, where the morning light coming through the east window illuminates their embroidery and makes it seem even more wonderful than it is. Okay, I'm going to try to contain my crazy for this segment because it's all about cats. And in case you didn't know, I'm a bit of a cat lady. But I couldn't talk about lucky animals without talking about them. And I did say lucky because even though black cats may unfairly be considered unlucky, cats in general are associated with all kinds of good luck and omens. There's a joke about ancient Egyptians predicting the popularity of Facebook by how they rode on walls and worshipped cats. But cats became associated with luck in Egypt when they noticed cats hunted and killed mice and rats, which carry disease. From there, cats are seen as having a noble purpose, and they were even mummified when they died. The worship of cats continued in different cultures throughout the world, with cats even being associated with gods in Greek, Roman, and Norse legends. That is until medieval times, when Pope Gregory began preaching that black cats were associated with Satan and witchcraft. And this theory continued for centuries, including in a popular story about a father and son walking one night, and they saw a black cat cross their path. They decided to throw rocks and stones at it until it ran into a house belonging to a woman the town suspected of being a witch. The next day, the woman was seen bruised and bandaged, leading the father and son to assume she was the one they had attacked when she had transformed herself into a black cat. Hopefully, people don't still believe that, But there are tons of animal adoption organizations that focus solely on fostering and finding homes for black cats, since they are statistically less likely to be adopted. One of the luckiest cats comes from Japan, called Maneki Neko. If you travel to Japan or even some Japanese stores and restaurants by you, you may have seen this statue of a large cat waving its right paw in the air, and it's associated with wealth and prosperity. Cats have also been said to bring luck to sailors, But having a cat on board a ship is not only considered lucky, it helps keep the mouse and rat population under control. However, there's one cat named Oscar who was aboard three different ships as they sank, including the Bismarck in 1941. He was then transferred to the governor's office in Gibraltar and didn't step paw onto a boat again. The role of E.B. White was played by Jason Bryant from Matt Talk Online. Information for this episode was sourced from the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, todayifoundout.com, history.com, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at storybehindpod, or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.